Hey, it's Wes with Dirt Concepts. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the Mugen MSB1 and kind of my thoughts on this buggy. Uh, now that I've been racing it on both dirt and carpet, um, I actually purchased my buggy uh, last spring. So I've had some time to kind of digest it and really understand how the buggy works. So this is part one of a series uh, that I'll be working on over the winter. And uh, I'm gonna to try to get a new video out to you guys once a month. So. Uh, today, what we're going to focus on is some of the durability um, improvements that you can make uh, to your kit. It is a very durable kit to start with, but we'll talk about some of the other durability improvements you can do, um, as well as we'll talk about some setup tips and tricks uh, specifically for carpet applications. So as I mentioned, the MSB1 overall is a very, very durable buggy. It's very beefy in how it's built. As you can see with the suspension arms, they're very uh, thick and beefy. So uh, it's not it's not by any means an, un, uh, an undurable buggy buggy so um, the first thing we're going to take a look at though is the front wing mount and this is specifically for dirt applications and it is the high mounting uh, wing mount position so what we're looking at here is the high mount uh, wing mount for the front of the msb1 um, the problem that i have seen and experienced personally at least on dirt if you flip over there's a little centering pin uh, that's right here so that centering pin, it's made out of plastic and it actually can shear off um, in a rollover if it's a really bad wreck. Um, you can kind of see where it goes on the buggy. So it goes right here, right underneath the, the mounting hole on the front shock tower. So what I did is I took an M2 screw and I actually screwed it straight to this hole and I put a pilot hole in the upper wing mount and drilled it through so then that way when you install the wing mount up top, instead of a plastic centering pin, you're just using a steel M2 screw. So that's not gonna deflect and it'll keep your wing mount nice and uh, flat and straight upright, you know, exactly how it was intended. All right, the next durability topic we're gonna discuss is the, is the steering uh, link. So this is more specific, I think, for like ultra high bike, you know, sealed clay, but really more so for carpet or artificial turf um, applications. So let's take a look. So you can see where the steering link, link is located, just like any other two-wheel drive buggy. It's right there. It connects to the servo horn and goes directly to the um, steering rack or bell cranks. So um, with this steering link, what I have seen is if you get a bad wreck, you know, on carpet, or if you land from a, a jump high speed with your wheels turned, it's actually going to pull out the threaded rod that connects these two end links. So what I did is installed a three millimeter longer uh, threaded rod so that way the rod seeds all the way inside of that end link um, as well as I applied a little CA glue uh, to the thre threads of the threaded rod. So when you do this it's going to help prevent it from pulling out. Next topic we're going to discuss is all going to be setup related for carpet applications. First and foremost, the first thing that I would change is your shock package on your buggy for carpet. I think the four hole pistons, they just don't produce enough pack uh, unless you get really, really thick oil. In that case though, you're just not getting enough suspension action. So um, what I'd recommend is stick with the two hole pistons and I would take a look at the Flashpoint 2.5 uh, millimeter thick pistons. These things were awesome on carpet. Didn't really have any chassis slapping, but it doesn't make it to where the suspension is so stiff to where it's not really working. So. Definitely start out there. What I'd probably do is run two whole 1.7 uh, millimeter hole pistons in the front and then in the rear run two whole 1.8 millimeter uh, pistons in the rear. So the next topic we're gonna discuss is weight transfer. So the MSB1 from, in my experience is very, very sensitive to weight transfer. So something to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of times I see on carpet, you know, whenever you have too much steering or you're oversteering, the people a lot of time want to switch directly to, oh, I just need to stiffen up the shock package. I need to uh, take out some roll in the chassis. Mm -hmm. But with the MSB1, it's, as I said, it's very sensitive to that. And it's really important that you have the even amount of roll, both front and rear. The key contributors usually to um, having your weight transfer off is going to be usually too much front weight bias. Um, so for example, the only brass that I'm really running besides underneath my battery is I run the brass, uh, ESC plate. There is the optional servo brass plate as well as the brass bulkhead spacer that you can run. 
one of the things that stands out the most whenever uh, your weight transfers off, you'll see that inside tire want to lift under hard cornering um, at a high rate of speed. So uh, to prevent that, really what you want is for the chassis to roll even both front and back. What I would recommend as a starting point is the four dot front springs, three dot rear springs, run the kit front sway bar and run the 1.3 millimeter rear sway bar. That'll get you in a good spot and then you can make fine tuning adjustments from there. Another setup tip for carpet applications is you wanna reduce the amount of stroke that your shocks have. I think a good starting point would be one millimeter internal spacer for both the front and rear shocks. And as far as external spacers, I would run at least three millimeters of external spacers, both front and rear. I'd probably actually start with four millimeter of external spacers in the front, and then you can kind of fine tune it from there. Next topic we're gonna to talk about is chassis stiffening. So this is actually another sensitive adjustment on the MSB1, and it's kind of cool. I think it's unique that this buggy has this adjustment. So let's take a look. So here's an example. Typically for carpet, um, what I would recommend as a starting point would be on the waterfall base that you see here, you can see it has three different stanchions that um, contact the chassis. And you can use spacers to decide, you know, which of those stanchions you want to be making contact so you can adjust the flex. Um, what I'd recommend is use the plastic spacer and only one screw in the center stanchion of the waterfall brace. That's gonna give you a good uh, flex setting to start with for carpet applications. The next topic we're gonna talk about is bone plunge depth into the diff outdrives. So this is a setting I think is adjustable on a lot of the modern buggies, but you can actually adjust how far the bones plunge into the outdrive. Uh, this is important depending on the ride height uh, that you're running. Obviously you don't want any bind, uh, but at the same time at full droop, you don't want the um, diff bone, or sorry, the bone to be popping out of the diff outdrive. So um, as a starting point, I'd recommend running the inside hole on here. So that way it actually pushes the bone further out and ensures that your uh, bone's not gonna pop out of the outdrive while you're racing. Next topic we're gonna talk about is diff oils. This is a really important one. So for diff oils on the MSB1 for spec racing applications at least, I would start at 80,000 in a rear diff with two spider gears installed. And then that's gonna be for when the track is green or let's say lower grip for carpet, which is still crazy high grip, but for carpet, lower grip. And then when the grip starts to come in, um, I would switch to either 100,000 or 120,000 to a gear um, in the rear diff. And this is just going to slow down the rotation of the buggy and make it a little bit easier to drive. All right, last topic we're going to discuss. And I know this one's going to get a lot of eye rolls and groans from everybody, but um, inverting your shocks. So I actually really like the way the buggy drives with the shocks inverted. Um, essentially what this does is it adds unsprung weight to the buggy um, on the rear as well as it takes weight off of the top of the chassis so the chassis doesn't want to roll as much. And that helps keep that inside rear tire uh, planted on the carpet during hard cornering. Uh, to do this, you basically use two three millimeter shims. I just use the Mugen shims that they sell. So that's six millimeters total of shims. And then you just take the same um, shock eye and put it on top with a lock nut. You'll have to use your screw all the way through and tighten this down really well because that will come loose if it's not tight. Um, on the bottom, what you want to use is this part number. It's a, basically it's a 5.8 millimeter offset flanged uh, shock eye. So it's SAM BFS-58. You can get this from Amy Hobbies. And essentially what you do is um, you put it on the set screw that goes on here. You put the shock eye on there with a flanged, flanged lock nut. And it's gonna fit perfect. There'll be no binding on the shock cap. So very easy mod to do, and I highly recommend it for carpet applications. All right, and that wraps up uh, part one of the MSB1, both durability and setup tips and tricks. So we'll have another one drop here in about a month and uh, look forward to talking to you guys soon.